Welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending July 24th, 2021. Mamoru Hosoda's long-anticipated Belle, a.k.a. the Dragon and the Freckle Princess film, opened this week to great success. It held its world premiere at the Cannes Film Festival on July 15th, where it reportedly received a 14-minute long standing ovation. Yeah, the festival has a reputation for giving long ovations, but Bells is still one of the longest to be recorded in the festival's history. Um, Hisoda was originally not scheduled for a post-screening speech, but following that response, he expressed his imp impromptu thanks. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, he said, to have it supported in this place where people who love film gather is very encouraging and gives me strength. Um, end quote. Bell opened in Japan on the 16th and sold more than 600,000 tickets in its first three days. Topping the box office chart for its opening weekend. Pretty good. Um, it's licensed by G-Kids in North America, so those of us here can look forward to its release in English and with English subs sometime this winter. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, it's, it, it, it says, uh, or, or, from what I've heard, like, folks are like, this is it. Like, this is Hisoda's, like, most impressive film. Just bar none. Like, he's, he's nailed it this time. Like, every, it, everyone who's watched it is like, yeah, uh, masterpiece level. So. Uh, that's the hope. Um, I mean, he certainly has plenty of things to talk about. He, he, you know, this is not, like, his, his swan song. Yeah. No, no, no. Um, he's... 51, I think? Something like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so yeah, he's... he's <laughs> spring chicken. Right. Well, that, that, that was the other thing, is that uh, he, he got it in... He didn't quite get it in hot water, but uh, there was some... some response to his... Uh, he, he said some things about Hayao Miyazaki um, while he was there. They got a people... A few folks... Um, uh, attention shall we say, um, which was kind of funny. Um, obviously, he has his own, um, he had his own experience as a Studio Ghibli. Um, yeah, and, and he basically said, you know, yeah, the way Hayao Miyazaki, is, he didn't even, he, he said, the way a certain well-known animation director who is very, you know, well-respected in my country, um, the way he represents women kind of has issues. Um, and talking about how, uh, you know, the women in those movies are kind of put on pedestals and are kind of these perfect people, um, and, you know, like, Nausicaa really doesn't have any flaws, and Kiki doesn't really have any flaws, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I think, hmm, interesting. Anyway, um, with people reading more during the pandemic lockdowns, 2020 was a record year for manga sales in North America. The demand hasn't, sl yeah. Um, demand hasn't slowed down in 2021, but unfortunately, so the supply chain has. Um, so North America is facing a shortage of manga as COVID-19 exacerbated already existing supply problems, including shortages of printers and truck drivers. Uh, the owner of a small comic store in California said he often special orders manga volumes for customers, but has recently found most of them out of stock. Um, he commented, quote, if it's not a current series, forget it. Anything that's finished, there is nothing available, end quote. Um, another store owner in Boston explained that less popular titles are still available or are more likely to be available for restock of the pub publisher, but they still sell manga faster than they can restock it. Uh, even large retailers like Amazon and Barnes & Noble can't keep popular titles in stock. Early volumes of Chainsaw Man, My Hero Academia, and Demon Slayer are currently unavailable even online, but of course that's constantly changing. Uh, VP Publishing Sales for Viz Media explained that the U.S. printing industry has consolidated a lot in the past few years, leading to fewer printing plants in general and even fewer that can print manga. Um, and then with the increase in demand in general for the pandemic, printers reached max capacity and weren't able to accept new jobs, um, plus restrictions were uh, uh, under place or in place. Um, uh, several publishers have said that they are actively working on sourcing more printers overseas and trying to remedy the supply issues, but it'll likely be many months yet before the manga supply returns to normal, in print at least. Um, and at least there have been plenty of digital manga readers joining the market in recent years, so we can still read our favorites even if not in print form. 
And that is my question. What will it take for the manga reading public to shift to, to, to adopt digital? Not for everything, but to, you know, use that as a common form of reading manga. Mm. Right. Floor of having a digital library that doesn't take up space. I mean, mm -hmm. that's really what it comes down to. And, um, and I think that people. I think as a gen I think what it is, I think it's just going to be generational. I think it's just going to be the upcoming generations are going to go digital. Mm -hmm. Those of us like myself are just going to die <laughs> and just <laughs> yeah, take our manga, uh, take our mind go with us. I'm going to be buried with my Kurosawa, Kurosawa, uh, Kurosagi book service mm -hmm. and, uh, and Rama and whatnot. Mm -hmm. and I think when you can when you can deliver the same kind of guaranteed access. So if I yeah. Like the Showa series that I just bought, the mm -hmm. manga. It's available on Amazon. It's fine. Mm -hmm. I have the physical copies. Mm -hmm. I will always have those physical copies. That Kindle that I have, at some point, is going to die. Sure. And whatever's on it is going to die. As long as the account will have the stuff I bought on mm -hmm. the Kindle forever, then I feel less like I should really have the physical thing and right. read it right. digitally. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think... I think that will be where the dividing line is. When you can say, oh, no, when you buy this manga, it's always going to be available, whatever you know, source you use it on, your app mm -hmm. or whatever, you save it on your computer, mm -hmm. it will right. always be there. Like you Kindle. Have to right. I mean, so you don't have to ever worry about it being mm -hmm. gone at some point where you're All like, right. oh, I'm so glad I bought the physical collection because I've got it here just, just in case I want to reread it. That, that's one of my interesting questions, though, because my physical manga is deteriorating. Like, my Astro Boy is yellowing badly, and it's not going to be readable, you know, in my lifetime. And, and then that kind of goes to the point of space, because, right. uh, you know, when I collect the comics, I, you know, you buy one to read, you buy one yeah. to away. <laughs> my large yeah. bag and the cardboard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know. Um, so. That's actually not too bad, but yeah. Just get the the nitrogen uh, in the yeah. accelerator thing, like the <laughs> Declaration of Independence, Brent. Mm -hmm. You'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Those are yeah. cheap. Come on, mm -hmm. only a couple hundred thousand bucks. In there. Right. <laughs> um, well, that's the other the other question is you know if we want more manga published, I would argue we should not be pushing. You know, we should not be insisting on print. Because prints them, you know, it's much more expensive for them to make print copies rather than just licensing yeah. and putting them out digitally. You know, yeah, if, I mean, literally the demand. If you just do digital, you can you can meet the demand. Right. Yeah. It's like right now you can't physically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you wanted to do that, then that's when you go to the, the digital library route, which mm -hmm. is what libraries are doing right now. And mm -hmm. you put you you collect the titles and you put it on the server. Mm -hmm. And you, you know, you put on your own yeah. programming, whatever, mm -hmm. and you know, which is what a lot of libraries are doing now for people who can have ebooks or whatever you can rent it through you know, these mm -hmm. programs and it's on your Kindle or whatever. Yeah. And um, but you know, it's just like, just like anything else, it's about access, and mm -hmm. you know, it, it, you know, you have to figure out what that access is. Going to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you know is odd for me to have heard just recently <clears throat> it was like for example music you know i've gone from vinyl to cassettes mm -hmm. to cds to digital mm -hmm. right. and guess what i found out the walkman's coming making the comeback cassettes are going to be reissued hmm. what yeah cassettes really yeah now it's not going to be. It's going to be more like the vinyl that they're doing now, in that you know, it's it's a, it's going to be a niche market. Sure. Right? Yeah, but, no joke. You know, but um, they're they're making tape decks. Hmm. You bring uh, back tape decks, and you know, you can buy the sets, which is 
kind of awesome because I got a whole closet full of like, <laughs> full of, like you know, tapes like Aztec camera or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Going through that, just like going, oh, I haven't heard this song in twenty years because I don't have anything to play it on. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say, I'm glad I have my dual deck. And I just thinking the other day, I have a Van Morrison album that was given to me <laughs> on my sixteenth birthday. Mm, wow. <laughs> it's like if I didn't have those decks, there'd be no way to listen to that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Yeah, no joke. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's an interesting issue. Um, that's weird. Why is it? Hold on. Why is that? Oh, I forgot to move a thing. I needed to take that. Move it like that. There we go. Uh, last week marked the 20th anniversary of Hiromu Arakawa's Full Metal Alchemist manga. A live stream anniversary special was held last Monday. It was announced that the beloved classic manga is inspiring a new smartphone game. Who is surprised? Um, no. <laughs> uh, Full Metal Alchemist Mobile will be, uh, we'll get more details on that in winter of this year. So we have a while to wait on that one. Um, other commemorations include a, ro- a rerun of an art exhibition on the franchise, a 20th anniversary book upcoming, and a free limited time digital release of the manga's first volume and free streaming of the first three episodes of FMA Brotherhood on YouTube, plus a collaboration cafe coming next year. Hmm. Um, fans of FMA and Arakawa's other uh, works also have more good news to look forward to. Uh, last week's issue of Monthly Shonen Gangan announced uh, a new manga from Arakawa is launching in the magazine soon. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I, you know, FMA still doesn't feel like 20 years ago. Yeah, <laughs> fair. Fair. Kind of like, you know, mm-hmm. Feel, yep. Feeling feel a little old. <laughs> well, I honestly would have thought it was the mid 90s or late 90s. I mm. didn't realize yeah. it was like yeah. already within the 21st century. Like, mm-hmm. wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Wow. Yep, yep, yeah. Thanks. Adult Swim used to have this game. It was a mouse, like you used your mouse on it, and it was just Colonel Mustang in the center of like you know one of the circles out in the circles, mm. and and like with little bits of rocks on the outside of it, and it would be these wolves that it was based not on Brotherhood but the, mm. the first one that came out, anime. Um, <clears throat> and so the wolves would come in, and you were the flame alchemist, and you would like circle yourself you know 360 and mm. uh, hit snap your finger and you know flame would come out and kill a wolf or something like that or you mm-hmm. knock down the rocks to mm. get at the wolves and things like that and it was one of those ridiculously like simple games almost like you know just like jerry's game on, on um, rick and morty where you just pop the loom <laughs> and and i was just I, and I was just i was just thinking about it when they said you know the smartphone game and i'm like thinking to myself oh, my god i played that Stupid thing for like hours on end. Just like, mm-hmm. okay, okay, <laughs> kill the wolves, kill because there's no end in sight. Right. 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 Mm-hmm. But I, it's like, oh my god. Yeah. I, I play Genshin Impact. I have no idea what it's like to play a game over and over yeah. and over and over and over yeah. yeah. Well, maybe this new, this yeah. smartphone will have lots of microtransactions to keep people Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Imagine that. Yeah. Much how how could it make money? Yeah. <laughs> also this week, a few news items we just wanted to mention. Um, if you ever dreamed of piloting a mobile suit, the newly announced Gundam Evolution game is for you. It's a first-person shooter um, uh, with six versus six online battles, free to play, with optional fees for items, of course. Um, it'll it is set to launch sometime next year in multiple countries and regions in the world. Yeah. Um, and it's difficult to go a week without Demon Slayer related news, this week being no exception. <laughs> the DVD release of the Mugen Train film has ranked number one on Oricon's weekly sales chart for five consecutive weeks. Um, the last time that happened was 16 years ago. Um, can anyone guess what movie that was? Can anyone guess what franchise that was from? A well known. Franchise? Yes, uh, very much so. I already know the answer, but I'm, yeah. so I'm not going to say it. But yes, <clears throat> Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, uh, and that was only the second one to ever do that. The only other film to reach the milestone was The Matrix back in the year 2000. 
um, which means Mugen Train is the first animation to top the chart for that long. Um, a new novel is also announced this week based on the Demon Slayer manga, the fifth overall. Uh, it'll cover the Entertainment District arc, which is volumes 8 to 11 of the manga, uh, which the upcoming TV anime will also cover, so that's kind of why. Uh, and lastly, for fans in Japan, um, a new VR roller coaster uh, based around Demon Slayer can to Osaka Universal Studios Japan in September. Uh, the Demon Slayer XR Ride will bring riders onto the Mugen Train. Um, Algonquin Young Readers announced this week it will publish the first ever English translation of Genzaburo Yoshino's How Do You Live novel, which is of course the inspiration for Hayao, Hayao Miyazaki's next feature film of the same name. Um, it will feature as a story um, uh, with great meaning to the film's protagonist, according to Miyazaki. Uh, the original came out in 1937 and follows 15-year-old, yeah, uh, follows Copper, a 15-year-old who's recently lost his father as he explores pre-war Japan, pre Japan, excuse me, um, and, uh, quote, learns from friends and family what really matters in life, end quote. Um, two beloved anime series, and yeah. I was going to say, because 1937, they're already engaged in China. Mm-hmm. And it's already started to draw off manpower and right. resources. Mm -hmm. and it's starting to show the initial strains of supply to the home market. I'm sure all that is going like, to show up in the book. Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's going to be interesting. Yeah. You're saying novel. We mean not light novel. No, we mean novel. Like novel, mm -hmm. novel. So, yeah. like, Kimetsu no Yaiba, the novel, is like a full-on novelization. Not just a light novel version. I, I don't know about that. Um, um, but from what I, from what I understand, um, uh, How Do You Live is a novel. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, two beloved anime series announced continuations recently. Studio Orange announced on Wednesday that Beastars will have a new arc. And I thank everyone that supported the show so far. Um, and a new Konosuba anime has also been greenlit. Uh, no details revealed. Um, My Next Life as a Villainous is also getting more anime in the form of a new original anime disc bundled with the manga 7th volume, um, which will feature a story from the childhood of the main characters. Cool. Um, a website and Twitter opened this week for an upcoming TV anime adaptation of Liz Takayama's alternate world pharmacy novel series about a pharmacologist who dies from overwork and is reincarnated into another world into a lineage of noble court healers. Um... And then, My Stepmother's Daughter Was My Ex-Girlfriend, a light novel series, I said that right, is also getting an anime adaptation. I saw that. <laughs> it's a rom-com about a couple who broke up after their junior high graduation, but discover on the day before high school that their parents are getting married, and they are now step-siblings. Yeah. Um, a 24-episode short anime of Tora and Mike is coming to the manga's official uh, Twitter account starting in August. Um, it is a feline human drama following the daily life of cat siblings and their regular customers at their restaurant in Nagoya. I don't know, man. Um, uh, Kaoru Hayamine's Mirage Queen Aimee Sirk, I'm probably mispronouncing that novel, is getting a theatrical OVA project next year for its 20th anniversary. Um, it follows a mysterious thief who always steals what they're after. Um... One Piece is a 100th compiled manga volume, which will be in September. Wow. 100th. And its 1,000th anime episode is also approaching. Oh. Wow. That's insane. 1,000 <laughs> episodes. I haven't even started it yet. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I we're done. We, we just I can't. 72 can't. hours this weekend. <laughs> I'm going to get there. <laughs> Um, so there's a new video collection of five short dramas announced this week, um, which is centered on the, on the One Piece manga, and will include live action and animated segments, um, to be a collaborative project with JAXA, because why not, uh, a Where's Waldo crossover, free releases of the manga, and more. Uh, the Japanese Agency of Cultural Affairs announced the studios that will participate in the second round of the Anime no Tane program to train and educate young animators. Um, Imagica Digital Scape, Studio L, Production Plus H, and The Spreet will each produce a new animation project between 7 and 10 minutes in length. Uh, this is the latest iteration of the Young Animator Training Project, uh, from which we got Little Academia, Death Billiards, Death Parade, and Ongaku Shoujo. 
Um, if you ever wish you could see an anime stage play adaptation, your chance is finally on its way. Stage play, not musical. Sorry. Um, nice. uh, yeah. Uh, Live at Viewing Japan will be streaming three 2.5D stage plays in August for viewers in the US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the UK, and Singapore. Um, their festival will bring live spectacle Naruto, My Hero Academia, The Ultra Stage, and Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon. Um, uh, and uh, yes, that will be coming um, uh, hopefully fairly soon. That's all the news for this week. Thank you all for watching. See you next week. So yeah.